the message that I want to bring before you today is uh, something different, uh, but along the theme that was given to us for this year. Uh, but let me give you the points that I want to bring. I want to uh, see if we can develop a doctrine of goodness as a theology. So there are four points that I want to bring before you as a development of theology when it comes to the goodness of God. Goodness as a person, goodness as a thing, goodness as life essence, and goodness as an extension. These are the four points that I want to bring before you. Goodness as a person, goodness as a thing, goodness as life essence, goodness as an extension. How many of you know reading of the psalm is part of the New Testament uh, worship? And Paul writing to the church says that reading of psalm is part of the worship. Just like we have songs, we have psalms as well. So today I want to, uh, in the context of this preaching, I want all of us to read together a psalm. Is that okay? And out of that psalm, we are going to develop this doctrine of goodness. Okay? That's something that is not something that I borrowed from somewhere. It is something that the Lord put on my heart. Let's see where, it, where the Lord wants to take us with it. So let's go to the book of Psalms and Psalm number 34. You know, if you want to sit down and read, you can sit down and read. If you want to stand up and read, you can do that. But let's read it all together with some oomph. Okay? Here we go. Let's let the church voice be heard. Go ahead. Face. Taste and see. Amen. Can we give the Lord a praise for this beautiful psalm? So let me take this moment to bring out the, the developing of uh, a theory, or theology, I'm sorry, with this theme called the goodness of the Lord. And I'll bring, you know, uh, more context to this psalm. This is a very powerful psalm. This is one of my favorite psalms when I used to preach uh, this psalm in some of the big conferences, crusades in different parts of the world. Psalm 34. You know, we see four verses there. Number one, verse number eight. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, I want you to know 
you know, this psalm was written, you know, there's something wrong, this is a bit tight. This psalm was written at a time, um, by the way, there will be the Bible study this week, um, that's the plan at least, and I would send out a message uh, because it could, this could be a very special Bible study. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man who takes refuge in him. This is one of the most upbeat psalms written by David. You can feel a sense of you know, ascension and you can see his steps is climbing higher and higher. You can see that upbeat kind of a sense in the psalm. But if you were to consider the context of the psalm, which I will come back to, you know, this was a psalm that was written in the most difficult time ever in the life of David. So in the midst of his greatest affliction, the greatest, you know, journey of despair, when he lost everything, and some of the things that we can glean from the history of the psalm is terrifying. He starts off by saying, we need to praise the Lord at all times. You know, so praise is not, you know, subservient to your circumstances. Praise overcomes your circumstances. So what is David saying in spite of what I'm going through? You know, I've come to realization that God is worthy to be praised. But then he goes into this beautiful thought, which I believe ministers to my heart. He says, you know, in this suffering, in this time of my affliction, I have come to a point in my life where I have tasted that the Lord is good. Sometimes it is not when things are great and good that you know the goodness of the Lord. It's when you're going through some tough time, you can taste and see that the Lord is good. Can I hear somebody who can say, in the worst situations of my life, I have come to realize that the Lord, He is good. Only such people can you make a sound in the house of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord is seen and tasted. He's saying it's not something that I heard. It's not something that I've learned. It's something that I've tasted. Meaning, through a seas of plethora of experiences, I've come to realize that the Lord is good. Now let me tell you something. When you go through tough times, when things don't look exactly how you planned, I want you to know, can you come to a point and say, even in this tough time, through experiences, I've learned something. The Lord is good. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, I want to emphasize goodness as a person. This is something that we spoke even a couple of weeks back. It starts with God as being good. Come on, church. Now, I want to bring two particular verses which touch my heart this afternoon. Two particular verses. One we find in the book of John, the Gospel of John. And it's a very powerful, you know, passage at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. John 1.46. Can somebody read John 1.46? And I want this to be a moment of celebration. John 1.46. Nathaniel said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Because Nazareth was not a town that was known for something remarkable, something extraordinary. It was a very ordinary town, maybe a town where it was the least of all towns. But here comes, you know, Peter, I believe, and John comes and tells Nathaniel, their, their, their brother or cousin, saying, Nathaniel, we have found, you know, something special in Nazareth. So Nathaniel, being very, very sincere, asked this very obvious question. He said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Now, I want you to know, you know, Philip's answer is, you know, even though there is nothing good as you can say as a thing that can come out of Nazareth, but the one who can produce good, he is in Nazareth. Now, can I hear somebody 
who knows what I'm, who I'm talking about. It's not a miracle, but the miracle worker. It's not the healing, but the healer. It's not the deliverance, but the deliverer. Can somebody say, that's my Jesus? If you believe that, can you shout a hallelujah? It's not the good that comes out of Nazareth, but the one who can cause good to come out of Nazareth. Wherever he goes, there is goodness. Wherever he goes, he removes bad and brings goodness. He's a good God. Can Let me tell you something. Goodness is not just a thing. Goodness is a person. And let me tell you, anybody in this place who have received Jesus as your Savior can testify today, goodness is a person. That's my story. Can you imagine as I embark on it for a few more seconds? What is, you know, Philip telling Nathaniel? You know what? You come and see all these sins and quintessential essence of goodness is in this man. Where he goes is goodness. So Nazareth is going to become a town producing goodness because every day sick people are going to be healed there. Miracles are going to happen there. Deliverance is going to happen there. Even the dead bodies are going to come back to life because the one who is the author of goodness is in that place. Come on, hallelujah. So I want to declare to people, Canada, we will have a testimony coming out of Canada. The goodness that can come out of Canada is not anything else but the one who can cause goodness, who lives in Canada, who is the Lord of Canada, who wants to be manifested in Canada. Are you with me? So imagine that word and the power of that word. You know, from that time onwards, goodness is moving to other villages other cities and other towns and nations. And let me tell you, after 2,000 years, even we pray today, we say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anytime we pray, we bring the word Nazareth, not because of the town, not because it had a special store where you could buy goodness. It's because of one who came to Nazareth. He is the author of goodness. He is still doing goodness. So can I declare over here. Anybody can say, the biggest goodness in my life is Jesus in my life. Come on, you can do better. That's number. But what I felt as an astute statement that need to be spoken today as a counter to the sentiments of evil. It's found in John 7, 12. 7, 12. I want you to read that, please, and I want you to make a decision today. There was much grumbling or muttering about him among the people. While some said he's a good man, that translation is wrong. It doesn't say man there, it says he's good. So some said he's good. Others said no. He is leading the people, he deceives the people. Jesus entering a place and the people are having two opinions. Number one, he's good. Another group said, no, he's a deceiver. Today, I'm bringing this sentiment at your feet. What will you say about Jesus? This will be the sound that's going to be heard. You know, Jesus didn't have to say anything. Everything about him was said by the people that encountered him. So at the end of the day, your testimony is what reveals Christ. So let me ask you from the bottom of my heart, there's commotion happening, muttering among people. One group said, he is good. Another said, he is a liar. It'll come down to these two lines. So let me ask you today, with no doubt in your heart, is anybody who can say with the greatest joy in your heart, I have seen him, I've tasted him, I have walked with him, and I know he is good. 
Now, can I give you an opportunity to make that a strong statement? I know he is good. I know Jesus is good. Only such people on the count of three. Can you make a sound today? Yes, I, I know he is good. One, two, three. Oh, hallelujah. Not because all my prayers have been answered. Not because I saw a miracle. But I know that man. I have seen him. I have heard him. I have seen him many situations of my life. And this is my testimony from Canada. On this day, I want to declare my Jesus is God. You cannot have a fixation to flirt around this truth. You have to make up your mind. Draw the line. Either is a liar, is a deceiver, or is good. And the devil is harping on the fact that God is a deceiver. From the Garden of Eden, he told Eve, don't you think God is trying to deceive you? Don't you think God wants to take the best out of your life? He was kind of chipping in this idea of God's plan is to deceive you. On the other hand, he is good. So let me tell you, can I make this as a statement against the forces of evil? In through all that you've gone through, can you give a testimony this afternoon? I know he is good. So from this church, may that word spread to the ends of the earth. Jesus is good. Come on, if you believe that, uh, can you give the Lord the best praise in the house of the Lord? Goodness. I want to declare, yes, there are times I have no answers to some of my questions. But I want you to know, I have enjoyed the journey with the Lord so much in these days of my testing. So much. It's not easy. You know, every day, every moment becomes hard. But I've seen, you know, that God remains good. So I'm going to make a testimony. As far as Anison is concerned, in this crowd, I want to lift up my voice and say, I know him, the one from Nazareth. He is good. Come on, church. With a smile on your face. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Amen. So let's go from there. Point number one, goodness as a person. Point number two. Now, are you ready for this? Verse number 10. And I want you to, some of you need to start believing God's word. Can you read verse number 10 of Psalm 34? No, Psalm 34. We'll go back to that. The young lions suffer want hunger and hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack. So from the goodness that you see in, 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 in him as a person, now goodness is flowing to you as things. Wow. You know, when I looked at, so I said, God, what do you mean by they lack no good things? So what does that encompass? What does that embrace? I looked in the Bible. If promise is fulfilled, it's called the good promise of God. So all the promise of God that gets fulfilled in your life is good. I looked at prayer. And Jesus said, when you pray, remember a father, you know, when a child asks for bread, he doesn't give a stone. And a child asks for fish, he will not give him a snake. If you know how to give good things to your children, how much more your heavenly father will give good things, uh, you know, to those who ask him. So every time a prayer is answered, good things are coming. And the Bible says the character of God, he gives good and perfect gifts. James 1.17, you know, salvation is God's goodness. Healing is God's goodness. Delivering people from oppression is God's goodness. These are goodness of God. And the Bible says, even when the lion is running around hungry, those who seek the Lord, 
will lack no. So I want some of you to believe, you know, the Lord, he is good. I've tasted and seen the goodness of the Lord. Now I'm going to make a declaration. There will be no one good thing that will be left out of my life. Every good thing that God has planned for my life will be my possession. I, can I get somebody? Because, now you can do better. You can do better. I want some of you to believe you will not survive on average. You will not survive on, you know, uh, even the law of probability. Let me tell you sometimes, when, they, when you talk about the young lions, they are the best hunters. No young lion will ever go hungry. That's statistics. But let me tell you, even if the best people in the land have problem because of the economy, you will still be protected. Now, we'll have to believe our God. So is anybody who can make a praise that's a declaration, I believe God over what I see in the natural. I believe God's word is more powerful. I believe God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. It doesn't matter if the other people doesn't get it. It doesn't matter. The best are not able to enjoy it. But I will enjoy it because in the name of the Lord, my God is a God who supplies good things in my life. And I will lack no good thing in my life. If you believe that, make a statement of faith by your praise. Somebody, declaration today, I will lack no good things. If it's here. I'm receiving it. If it's finance, I receive it. If it's salvation, I receive it. If it's a blessing, I receive it. In the name of Jesus. Hey, are you with me? I will receive all the goodness of the Lord. So I'm going to make a statement by faith. And I want the church, if you want to receive it, can you join me today? There will be goodness of the Lord surrounding my life. Day and night. And I'm going to say like David, the Lord is my shepherd. And then you come down and then he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That means I will be surrounded. I will be chased by the goodness of the Lord. If anybody wants to defeat the devil by an assertion of faith, can you make a statement with your voice this afternoon? Goodness is going to follow you as things from God. Come on, as healing, as a miracle, as a new door open, as a financial breakthrough, as salvation, peace in your life. Come on, hallelujah. Goodness is now becoming a thing in your life. Hey, these are moments I want to have a church where when the pastor stops preaching, the people continue preaching. You can make some sound or statement or, you know, I'm waiting. Are you taking custody of these words? That you will not, just because God is your good God, in your life there will be nothing that is good that you're going to lack. Everything is going to be supplied called goodness around you. If you can believe that, can you do some action or statement as if this is going to be the foundation of your life? Come on, hallelujah. So goodness as a thing that will not be taken out from you. Number three, let's read the third point. Can we put those points once again? Is that available? The points. Goodness as, can you read the verse? Um, verse number, yeah, verse number 12. It's interesting, 8, 10, 12, 14. What man is there who desires life and loves many days? Anybody loves many days? Hey. Okay. So, if there's anybody who loves many days, now I want to bring a distinction here. Until now, we have learned, and that's not wrong, that's proper theology. God's goodness brought me thus far. Is that a good statement? Okay, I'm alive today because of you're declaring God's faithfulness. But I wanted to 
move to another level. If you have experienced God's goodness, now you'll have to make a statement of faith, a declarative statement. And what is that statement? It's not that I'm alive because of goodness. He's saying, I'm going to live now for only one reason, to see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, come on, church. Now, anybody can move from, I have lived because of God's goodness, to the point I'm going to live now to see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Why are you not dead today? Because I, I believe God wants to show some goodness today. Why are you alive tomorrow? Because God wants to show some goodness in your life. You are not living just to make the planet balance out with the population. That's not why you are here. I remember the one time I was, and I used to travel a lot on Air Canada. So Air Canada, when you travel a lot in those days, you don't have business class, but they'll give you coupons because you're traveling a lot. So you got about four or five coupons. And they always want your coupon when you come to London, England, to, to fly to Edmonton. So I remember one day I said, God, you know, would you, because I want to save this coupon for another time. I have only four international coupons. Amen. So would you let them take me into business class without the coupon? Oh, come on, hallelujah. You know, the guy, I came to the thing and he said, I said, can I get an upgrade? He said, you know what, coupon. I said, I've got a coupon. So I gave it my heart, but I'm giving and not giving it, you know. <laughs> and, and finally, the guy took it and he was typing. He said, you know what, I just got an information from the pilot. I still don't know how that happens. It seems that, it seems that there's a problem with the weight balance. And they want you to sit in the business class. You know, looking at me, if I am the cause of weight balance, it's a miracle. I think they saw a giant. They didn't see me. Come on, hallelujah. They put me in the business class without the coupon. Now, let me tell you, some of you are not alive because of statistical error or maybe a balancing of humanity. You are alive for one reason, to see the goodness. Hey, can I hear somebody who can tell the devil, I am alive and I'm going to remain alive because I'm going to see the goodness of Allah. Come on, if you believe that, shout a hallelujah in the house. Because the devil wants to send out this message, you're going to have a life dragging and muttering and murmuring and you know what, finally you'll become old and you don't even know who you are and you know, you'll sit there completely wondering and you look at your children and say, who are you? And then they will say, mama, we are, you know, I'm your daughter. And then you say, who am I then? <laughs> you know, those kind of, who's this lady lying saying on the bed beside me? That's not going to be a life. You'll have a life where you will live to see the goodness of the Lord. I'm excited for this day because this is the day that the Lord has made and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Even when you're old, you're going to celebrate the goodness of the Lord. If somebody can tell the devil, I'm living for one purpose, to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If you believe that, shout hallelujah in the house. That's the reason I'm alive. I'm not dead because there's such, some, some more goodness that I'm supposed to see. I could have been dead and gone. And that's not just my testimony, it's testimony of some of you. Maybe through an overdose of drugs or maybe through a sickness or maybe through an accident. But the reason you did not die, because God wanted you to see some more goodness in your life. If you believe that... Can, no, you can do it. Let the devil hear the shout of praise in the house. I'm going, hey. Oh, I'm feeling excited here. And that's exactly what David said. I would have been, I would have failed if I had not believed that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Only such people. I don't want you to praise God if, you know, different people have got different ways of responding. But do something. Did you see me doing this? It's not that I wanted to. 
You know, even today I planned my preaching. I said, you know what? I'm going to stand quietly and I'm not going to do much action today. It'll be like talking to the people from my heart to your heart. But something came over my legs when I heard that word that I'm alive, not as a statistical error or maybe to balance the population of the earth. I am alive for one reason. There's some more goodness that I need to see. And until I see that, my eyes will not be closed. If anybody wants to join me, do some action, make a faith proclamation, come on. This. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I don't have time to explain, but in this passage, David says there's one thing that you have to be careful. Be careful how you use your tongue because your tongue is connected to your life. And that's the reason it says life and death are in the power of your tongue. And let me make this very clear. How many of you know there's a sacrifice called living sacrifice in the book of Hebrews? And, and, and that brings life. It's called living sacrifice. But you know what the sacrifice is? It's the fruit of your lips. Let me tell you, when you praise God from your heart, you're producing life. So can I give people a chance to give a life sacrifice, living sacrifice, on the count of your living stones, giving living praise to the Lord. Can you give a Lord a praise because that's going to extend your life. That's going to extend your life. Hallelujah. You know, I know this church is going to become bigger. So we will have, you know, one of the platform style, you know, style for our church will be that I'll be preaching. There'll be people even behind. So I'll be preaching like this. So let me get the sense of that's happening now. If you want, somebody wants to just shake hand with somebody or give a high five to somebody to give this truth that I am going to remain alive because God wants me to see some goodness that is still pending in my life. Come on. Oh, can I get somebody? Hey. <laughs> oh, can I? Oh, I'm going to put a tie here because I want to see some goodness called marriage. Daddy. Lord, I want to see that. I want to see that. I want to eat that food. Come on. I want to be there. Hallelujah. Can somebody join me this afternoon? I am going to be alive to see the goodness of the Lord. Only such. Goodness as a person. Goodness as a thing. Goodness as your life is sense. And finally, verse number 12. Keep your, okay, verse number 12. 14, I'm sorry. Depart from evil and do good. Goodness is not something that gets confined in you. Goodness will start pouring out Amen. to others. So God is good. He will not prevent any good thing from coming into my life. And three is going to make my life look for, for good things to happen. Oh, I'm living. Oh, hallelujah. And fourth, I'm not only blessed with goodness, I'm able to bless others. Anybody in this place who wants your life to become the platform? Ah, I've gone to marketplaces in Africa, in India, even in some Southeast Asian countries where, you know, the mama will sit there. She has got a basket and out of that she'll keep on giving mangoes. She will give you mangoes out of the basket. And the Lord says, I'm going to make your life a basket. to bless others. If anybody wants your life to be a conduit of God's goodness, the fruit of the Spirit is also goodness. If you want that to be a life, can you make a shout of praise in the house of the Lord? Goodness as an extension. 
I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. You know, this afternoon, this morning, you know, I had a few people that sent me dreams and visions that God had given me, very powerful, profound ones. And one person sent me a dream which I still don't understand fully. He said he had a dream this morning, and the dream, he saw the year 2006, 2006. That's about 18 years ago. So I went and looked at the, how can I find what happened in 2006? And I went and I've got tons of emails from 2006 with pictures. I was about to bring one picture and Jerin told me if you take that. <laughs> I become like the, when the police come, you know. 18 years 18 years back, beautiful stories. I saw letters that came to me, people who wrote to me, and letters that went, Tammy's days. My conversation with Auntie Molly and Barnett, they were not even part of a church, you know. And then when I looked at it, you know, some of my pictures from some of my crusades and powerful. And some of the young people that connected with me, have become some big names across the globe. Big names. Like in the ministry. Not just one or two or three. I saw about four or five of them. Big names they have become. And those days they were just writing to me for some help in the ministry. And when I looked back and I saw all that, I said, God, little things that we will never think as big has produced impact, churches, blessings that cannot be counted. So I want you to know, do not dismiss even a small thing. Even a smile matters. Even a hug matters. A word of encouragement matters. And I want you to know how many of you want to say, God, in what ways I want to be a transcript of your goodness. I want to, you know, Pour out your goodness to somebody. I want to do good in my life as long as I live. Only such people on the count of three as a sign of your agreement to this truth. Make a sound. One, two, three. You have. What a beautiful story. So let me repeat that. Goodness as a person. So that word made me come to tears. What will you say about Jesus when there's a commotion? Or you will stand in the ground of neutrality and pretend you didn't hear that question. But may God give us the grace. I said to Lord God, till the end of my life, I want to keep on saying, he's good. whether it's in a marketplace, whether it's tough times in my life, to say, he is good. Give me the grace. Because when, it, when I stood before that verse at a close range, it seemed a bit intimidating. Then I had to cry out to God for grace to declare till the end of my life, you know, when... My life leaves this planet to tell my children and the generations to come, your father served the Lord and he is good. You know the story of Polycarp, the disciple of John in the first century. History says this. This is not in the Bible. Polycarp was taken by under the, I think it was Domitian or Nero, he was taken to be killed. And because he was an old man, old man, I think 85 or 86, the soldiers that were taking him, they kind of, you know, nudged him and said, just for one moment, deny Jesus. And nobody's going to hear it. Why should you die? And it's not easy for us to kill you as an old man. Because he looked, he had this, you know, the, 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 the beauty of that, a man who's carrying age and wisdom together, you know, with his beard, 
gray bearded. And this is what he said. I think it was 85 or 86 years. He said, for the last 86 years, not once, he has not been good to me. How can I deny him? Church, let this be our story. Whether we are on the plane or in the market or in the workplace, to say he's good. So goodness as a as a person, goodness as a thing, goodness as your life is since you're living to see good things. Not just lift. And goodness to do good to others. But I want to bring one revelation close here. One revelation. And with this we'll close. Another five, ten minutes. And then we'll pray and close. There's a verse that many of you have memorized. There's verses on the angel of God and, compa- and you know, encompassing. But before I go there, what was the story of David when he said, I taste and saw that the Lord is good? This was the worst time in the life of David after he killed Goliath. King Saul turned against him. So finally, can you imagine how bad the situation is? He goes to the land called Gath in order to find protection. And Gath is the place where Goliath comes from. So he found to his utter shock that being among enemies is better than being among friends, so-called friends. I don't know if anybody has been there. He's not happy to live in Israel. He's happy to live in a foreign land, in a land where there are Philistines and it's a land of Goliath. That, to me, is an identity issue. Because a Jewish man finds his identity not just from his race, but also from his geography. The moment you're displaced from where you are supposed to be, the land of Judah, they lose it. Hence, for them being taken into captivity, they lost it. They couldn't even sing the songs of Zion anymore because it's an identity issue for them. So they will always wait to come back to the land. And here is a king, supposed to be the king of Israel, now languishing in a place which belongs to the enemy and finds comfort and seeking their protection against his king, King Saul. What a dreadful place to be. But one day, you know, the people of the foreign land, they went to the king, Achish or Absalom. Well, that was his title. And told him, this man is a spy. So in order to save himself, he pretended to be a madman. The king of Israel. Anointed to be the king. He had formation of saliva and form coming out of the end of his mouth. And he scratched the walls of that place in order to show that he is mad. And finally, Akish says, you know, what need I have got with this madman? Throw him out. And by which he is saved. Can you imagine in every sense his identity is being questioned? A king pretending to be a madman. The place that he's supposed to be the king is not the place that he would rather be away from or run away from. That's the situation. And, and then he goes into a, <laughs> into a cave called Athula. And while he's in Athula cave, here comes few people to join him. And all of them are similar to him. He didn't get one bank manager. All of them are lost cases. It's like the person who's ill-fated, wherever he goes, all the ill-fated people will come and join him. There is a proverb in Malayalam, I don't know how to translate it. Wherever this bad, ill-fated man goes, that becomes hell. Everybody comes and joins him. And you can you imagine, you have no, you're surviving by... A whisker. And then you've got all these people that came to the cave. And he's sitting in the cave. 
But then he says, hey, wait a minute. I could have been killed. And the angel of the Lord encamped around me and protected me. And then he says, in this dire situation of my life, I tasted and saw that the Lord. Church, after going through some struggles in your life, anybody can say, I have tasted and seen. So at that point of time, he has no good things in his life. Everything is bad. Everything is bad. Now he's saying no good things that God will spare. But at that point of time, nothing remotely suggesting goodness is happening in his life. But he said, then I saw not the thing, but he is good. One who called me is good. Can I get somebody who can say Yes, pastor, there are good things that are still missing in my life, but he is good. So I've made a decision. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall be... Con Come on, church. I'm going to just allow those three lines to become something that every one of us, if that's the place that our hearts are, to respond to. 34, 1, 2, 3. If, let me see if we can respond to that. I want you to just come to a place where you know it's true. I will bless the Lord at all. Remember the worst situation. He just pretended to be a madman. You know, survived by a whisker. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Keep reading. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Some people come and ask me, what is there for me to praise the Lord? Can you make some boasting in the Lord? Oh, what have you to show others that God has done for you? Look at your neighbor, look at your cousin, they're doing better than you. Can you say, I can make boast in the Lord? I will. Come on, church. Can you make boast in the Lord this afternoon? Can you show that your God is somebody that is worthy to be praised and you can talk good about him, big about him, only such people with a sound that you can make boast in the Lord? Come on. Let the humble hear and be. The good thing is, he had a good audience at that time. Everybody that came to him were broken hearted and humble. That's the reason you need to find a place, a church where, you know, when you testify, others will not look at you what, as to what planet you came from. They will say, I know what you're talking about. I have been there as well. Let me tell you, when this church becomes bigger and bigger, we will have no place where somebody will get extra attention because they're boasted in the Lord. Because the person sitting beside him will say, I know what you're doing. I know. I have been there as well. Come on. Is anybody who can say, we can all speak today. The Lord is good. Come on. Only such, if you've got a testimony, you know that God has been great in your life. Can you without a sense of somebody watching me give a Lord a praise in the house of the Lord? Yes. yes Pastor, you know, today I find myself difficult, you know, to be honest, to move around as freely. But I remember a few months back, Pastor, when you came with your legs cut. Half heavy was the thing that fell on your leg. Uh, one, ton. one ton just dropped on his leg. It could have gone over his head. But let me tell you, Pastor, can you walk now? Are you limping? Walk properly, Pastor. You walk a little more faster. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. So we have such testimonies of many people here who can say, the Lord brought me this far. I know where I come from. Only such people. Can you all join together? Let us boast in the Lord. Together. Together. Hallelujah. And then, those of us stand, remain stand. They made a statement. Oh, magnify the Lord. That means God is already big. Let's make him bigger. Let's make him look bigger and exalt his name together. Can you make, in the worst situation of your life, can you make your God look bigger? Come on. Only such people. 
all. Let me release this revelation. Revelation. Let me release. Amen. My co-brother is here. Levin, come here, please. Why are you alive this year? To see the goodness of the Lord. I tell you, the baby is turning out to be a pretty, very, very beautiful baby. And I tell you, God kept you. God kept you. And this year, I believe there will be many more such stories. I am also declaring there will be marriages that are going to happen. Children that are be born. Come on, because you are kept alive for the goodness of the Lord. But let me give you something which I don't know how to put it out, out to you. But I'll try my best. Can you read, please, verse, the next verse? Or which is that verse? Those who look to him are radiant. Where's that verse? Hmm. Those who look to him are radiant. Five. I want you to read. Those who look to him are radiant. And their faces are never... Let me close here with this revelation. The Hebrew scholars find this bit confusing. And people have even connected this to the theory of, relative theory of light. It's a scientific theory on this verse. Why is that so? I'll tell you why. Because the word radiant is a word nahar. And that is never a word for radiance. Nahar. And Nahar as a noun, anybody knows what Nahar is? Anybody Jewish? Nahar. Or Nahar. Nahar as a noun means river. So anytime you see the word river, the rivers that came out of the Garden of Eden, the word is Nahar. So what is God saying? If you look to the face of the Lord, You'll become a river. Is that what you say? Nahar. So the, the noun is a river. But in a prophetic context, this word has been used four times in the Bible. To talk about the millennial, millennial reign of Christ where the Bible says the people of the earth will go to Israel to worship will go to Jerusalem. It's found in three places. Can you read, please? Four places it's been used, but with Israel. Micah 4.1, Micah 4.1. It shall come in the past, to pass in the latter days, the mountain of the house of the Lord. The mountain. Shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and it shall be people lifted up above the hills. In the next time, and people shall flow. That's Nahar. So the movement of the people is connected to a river. That means it's not that they started to flow and stopped. They continue to, because the river keeps on flowing. The peoples will come from many nations to Jerusalem to worship the Lord as a river. You know, I, want, I don't want to go into other areas, but the final battle will, will be between waters. When God says, this will become a river. We find that in Isaiah 2, 1 and 2. Isaiah 2, 1 and 2. The, okay, uh, no, 2, 2, Isaiah 2. Isaiah 2, 1 and 2, I think. Yeah, go ahead. You'll see the same word. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days, the mountains of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills. And all the nations, including India, will flow. I believe before that happens, there's going to be people flowing into the kingdom of God like never before. Mark my words. From all the places, I'm told that even in Gaza, where the biggest war is happening, 
there are hundreds of Muslims seeing visions of Jesus Christ and coming to the Lord. They'll flow like a river, Nahar. But two places, this word is connected to radiance. Okay, two places. The first one is the place that we read now, those who look to him. So something will start to flow from the source into you. And that will make your face shine. So they say the theory of light is almost like water flow. It flows. They call it the relative theory of light. So they say that's what this is scientific. So you have the source called God and then it will flow and your face will start to shine. The best verse for that is Isaiah. I think 60 and verse number, f you know, the waters, the rivers will flow. Can somebody pick that please? I think I got it. Yeah, Isaiah 60, verse number four. Isaiah 60, verse, lift up your, that's the word, all around and see that all gather together, they come to you. No, verse number three, I think. It of, okay, look at the word, you see the brightness of your rising, keep going, keep going. Okay, next verse. Then you shall see and you, and you become radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. Things that were going away from you suddenly will turn towards you. The ships are coming towards you now. When you see that, suddenly your heart will start to expand and your face shall start shining. So what is David saying? You know, when I was looking at God, before you know, his goodness started to flow into me. And my heart started to get expanded. Because with my small heart, I can't be a king. God started to expand my heart. And my face started to become radiant because of the flow. But to make it absolutely clear, with this I'll close, connected to goodness. I'll read one passage and then we can leave this place. Jeremiah 31, verse number 12. Jeremiah 31, 12. I want you to, it's connected to water. They shall come and sing aloud on the heights of Zion and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord is going to flow. And the word there again is nahar, meaning when God's goodness will flow like a river. The grain is coming, the wine is coming, the oil is coming, the young of the flock is coming. It's bringing substance with it. The goodness of bringing things that you need, that you have been praying for. And before you know, your face will start to become like a river flowing with the goodness of the Lord. How many of you? How many of you want the goodness of the Lord to flow out of your face, like making you radiant like a light? When people see your face, they're going to say, this is nothing but the flow of God's goodness upon my life. Only such people. Can you make a declaration? Can you make it a faith statement over your life? The goodness of the Lord, it's not radiant as just light. It is radiant as water flowing. And what is the water? It's the goodness of the Lord. Flowing like a river. And before you know anybody looks at your face, they see the goodness of the Lord flowing out of you. And you will say it's because of the flow. It's a river. It's a river. And the word there is, anybody that looks to the face of the Lord, their face will become the flow of a river. Every block is going to be removed. I'm blessed to bless others. If that's your decision, that's your desire, can you, by a, an agreement of faith, put your hands together, spring up if you want, and give the Lord a praise. Let's pray. Come on, church.
can somebody receive this word? When I look to him, his goodness is flowing from him, come on to me, and it's flowing out of my face. Anybody, that's the reason I said, goodness shall be seen this year. Can you say, hey, this is my word for my life? Goodness will be seen. Goodness will be seen. And that's going to make my face radiant. You know what happens? First, your heart will expand. Because suddenly things that were leaving you, the Lord is prophesying over somebody. You thought that ship is coming towards you, but suddenly it went away. But right now you're seeing a vision. The ships are turning towards you. This is your season. If you believe this is your time, those who look to him are going to have the river, the flow of God's goodness. It'll come from him and flow through you. But some of you need to say, in spite of what I'm going through, I will say, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. My God is a good God. Only such people make yourself boast. Those who look to him are Nahar. A river is going to come out of you from him through him and to him. Let's pray. I want everybody to lift up your voice and just pray to the Lord wherever you're standing. Levin, would you come and join hand with me? You have seen God's goodness, but let it flow, 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 flow. Those who look to him and call him good, it's going to flow out of your face, out of your face, out of your life. Can I pray this prayer over you? The waters are coming. Amen. But they're bringing, it's called the rivers of wealth. Yeah. The rivers of peace. The rivers of blessing. The rivers of provision. They're bringing something alongside. Can you receive it now in the name of Jesus? It's like from him, it's flowing. It's flowing into the cave that you are. You might be thinking nobody knows what I'm going through. But his goodness is flowing. And it flow out of you. Father, I want our church to be a witness of the goodness of the Lord. I declare all those four blessings. The goodness of the Lord is in you, Lord. We will never lose sight of it. You are good. The goodness of God will bring things that there will be nothing lacking. The goodness of the Lord is a reason why we are alive and the reason why we are put to see more goodness. Number four, our goodness will bless others. We'll be able to share this goodness with others. Thank you, Lord, it's been done. I bless your people as they go. Let them go with the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall be continually be in my mouth. Thank you, Lord, it's been done. In Jesus' precious name we pray and everybody said...